All righty then. Uh, Pistons are reportedly uh, rumored to make a big offer to Jalen Bronson this offseason. But first, let's talk about the death of the great jerseys. They're saying that the Detroit Pistons reportedly uh, won't. Uh, we probably won't see the great jerseys again, or at least for a long time. Okay. Um, um, and it's always mixed. You got to understand, it's always mixed. Uh, there's always mixed uh, opinions when you talk about fast. You got to understand, you got white Piston fans, black Piston fans. You got urban fans. You got fans that live in the boondocks. You got fans that live in the big city. And, you know, even though hip-hop culture is, you know, syndicated around the world, it's one of the youngest uh, cultures around, but but it's the, one of the most fastest rising cultures out there. And check out Detroit Pistons Talk playlist by the, a lot of way for more videos like this. Um, You know, not, not everybody, not everybody, you know, agrees with the fastest statements in hip-hop. And I really don't agree with y'all wearing purses and tight-ass pants neither, but nonetheless, okay, um, not everybody agrees with, you know, fashion. So you're getting different opinions. I know in the 90s, a lot of people hated the teal jerseys. I love them, still love them to this day. Glad they coming back. But some people might associate the teal jerseys with losing in the UPN Pistons. And I still think they won, like, what, 54, 55 games in them jerseys. But it was a tough time. You know, that now the bad boy jerseys was dope. Excuse me real quick. They was dope. You know what I'm saying? White, red, blue, that, that jerseys, the blue and red ones. You know, they should have just stuck with them. But, you know, at times you got to change. But the horse emblem is the best. And the the, the teal jerseys and the, the burgundy ones, they they were a fa- they was a fashion statement. That's what they were. They were they were a fashion statement, man. It was finally something different and not the, the, the norm. And it was kind of flamboyant. And that's why they was beloved like that. And the horse was beloved like that because it was something that we hadn't seen in a long time. Even when they had the lightning bolt jerseys, man. You know, still, you know, those kind of don't really compare to how flamboyant those that horse jersey was and the teal was. And it was dope. You know, the gray jerseys, you know, do I dislike them or don't like them? Man, they straight to me. You know, they straight. But most of the jerseys today, once you look around the, the, the National Football League and the National Basketball Association, most jerseys are trash. You know, Sandy, the Los Angeles Chargers, you know, they might just, you know, be one of the few teams that got solid jerseys. You know, the old Denver jerseys when John Elway got there to, with the horse and the, the, the orange and the blue, how they were not like the blue they got now. You know, it was cold. You know, when the you know Patriots played the, the Bears, 85 Bears in the Super Bowl, you know, them jerseys was better than the ones they got now. The 90s Pistons, I mean, the 90s Lions jerseys was better than anything they came up since. The, the blue ones, the different blue they came in with the black lines, I don't know who thought about them. The old Cardinals jersey, the old uh, uh, Jaws Wojnarowski, uh, whatever his name is, would be on ESPN, uh, Philadelphia e- Eagles Cunningham type jerseys. Those was dope, you know. But these straight, you know, I don't have no issue with them. You know what I'm saying? They all right. You know, it ain't the worst. I mean, but jerseys across the boards in professional sports, man, it's just they terrible. You know, Tampa, you know, Tampa, you know. You know, Tampa, you know, with the orange signal, people, you know, criticized them so much. Dude, so uh, that was straight to me, you know. Even when they came with the red and, and the black with the brown, that shit was dope. The all-star sap and Brook jersey. Them bitches were dope. But across the board, you know, jerseys falling off. You know, they ain't what they used to be. But, you know, if you had to say the greatest jersey of all time from the Pistons, it's, it's the Isaiah jerseys. In my opinion, it's the Isaiah jerseys. And I, I'm wondering, you know, what an alternate jersey that nobody talked to, talked about that they should do, which they probably never going to prove. Y'all want to know which one they should have did? They should do a bad boys alternate jersey, at least when they start winning. They should do a bad boys alternate jersey, black, orange with the bad boy in, emblem on the jersey and the number. They should do a bad boy alternate jersey. That's what they really should do. That that sell like hotcakes, bro. Those are sell like hotcakes. You'll talk, but let me know what you think on that. Okay, so they're saying that this offseason, Detroit is planning a big money offer for Jalen Bronson. Like I said, if you're going to creep into the $30 million uh, arena, you might as well just offer Zach Levine. You know, that's my opinion. You know, if he don't return to Chicago. And it's a chance that neither one of these dudes come to Detroit, by the way. 
I think uh I think you know uh what's the brother name uh Mark Cuban is gonna keep this kid because they know it's not easy to find players to play with uh to play with Luka Donatich. It's not easy. So you know, I think he important. Now they got Spencer did with and they play well, and maybe that's their assurance. Who knows? But they said they will not facilitate a sign and trade for Jalen Bronson, and that might change. <clears throat> but you know, if you don't get you don't get either one of these dudes, the pickings are slim at guard. <laughs> you know, and it depends on where you're drafting that in the draft. No, I don't want Gary Harris. <laughs> Hell no. You know, I mean Schroeder, no. You know, uh, you know, Bruce Brown bring him back. He's been here, bun that. All the depot showed some life last year. He still he ain't even 30 yet. But you know, but you know, Malik Monk, he would be a good fit. He under 20, he's under 25. So, you know, I think when you start talking about alternatives, which we'll get there in the season, it is on the unrestricted. When you start talking about build building a list, you know what I'm saying? About you know if we if you miss out on Levine, hopefully they go after Levine because he's dope, and they miss out on um, Jalen Brunson, which is highly possible. I mean, really, then you know, then you probably start talking about Malik Monk, Gary Payton. You probably talking about Gary Payton, Payton the second anyway. You need a dog, you know, that can get in and defend anyway. So you probably talking about Gary the second, regardless of any scenario, and you probably talking about Malik Monk. And that's who you're talking about. You know, Gary Payton the second should be on their list regardless. Pay him some nice money, pay him about four or five. You only make him two, bring him to Detroit. You need that, you need that pit bull. You know, and you parent, you know, you put you bring in Jalen or, or Zach, you can't bring in them. You know what I'm saying? Then you look at Malik Monk. You know, then you look at Malik Monk. You know, you don't want to break the bank for Malik Monk. You probably talking about the eight to ten range, probably on a two or three year prove it deal. But yeah, that's what you're looking at. So I'm going after Gary Payton in second regardless, but, you know, nonetheless, they were prepared to offer big money. And if I'm going to offer that type of money they talking about, depending on – and everything subjective with Detroit teams, you know. When Detroit teams get to talking about, you know, we're going after a blue-chip prospect, like the Lions said, we're looking at a big-time receiver, they bring in DJ Shark. <laughs> so big money for them could be 18, 15 million. It's never what we, we envision it is. It's never what it's actually said it is. It's subjective most of the times today to their needs but you know like i said before um he proven his worth man and like i said before i'm not paying him uh, i'm not paying him too much over 20 if i'm gonna go 25 i might as well move some shit around get the 30 ball and pay levine he, he gave you versatility levine just need to be a more willing defender and that's a wrap after that that's what i'm doing you know, but like I said before, Bronson is a deal dog, but I'm not about to pay Bronson $30 million a year. He ain't never been an all-star team. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking around the 20 variety. Maybe if we got to go to 25, eh, maybe. But, you know, I'd rather break the bank on defending the rim, but it depends on how they move shit around. The Jeremy Grant trade, if they do trade them, they might talk turn around and just pay Jeremy Grant that money and not make no big moves and just do something in the draft. You know, it never ceases to amaze me with the Pistons or with Detroit teams. But like I said, what I would do is if I can do a sign and trade for Zach Levine or Jalen Bronson, that's what I do. You know, and you still have money left over. Now, also, you also can just say, you know what, I could trade Jeremy Grant and I can, you know, I can, you know, bring back a lottery pick in there and, you know, bring back somebody for the same or less money. And, and handle it from there. But, you know, like I said before, we're going to go over some of the realistic scenarios. But, yeah, I don't mind bringing him in, but I'm not paying him, you know, top dollar. Like, Levine should be the target. When you on the horn, you know, right, you know, with the legal tampering period, it should be Levine. When I say the imposition to get Jay and Ivy or Shane Sharp, then that changes everything. You know, that changes everything. So, I mean, you still could get them, but you just moving shit around. You probably move K to the three, maybe Bay to the four. Who knows? I don't know. K to the three. You put Bronson Nurse, Zach Levine back there with Jay Nivey. So, it changes everything. What if Shaden Sharp or Ivy or another guard, Johnny Davis is the best there one there? You know, so might change the plan. So, I mean, but all, after all of this, you definitely need to go see uh, Gary Payton second. 
you definitely need to get Gary Payton the second, man. You know, he brings too much value. You know, kind of give you that Mike James, Lindsey Hunter, Pit Bull vibe, too. I like him a lot, man. But, you know, like I said, man, um, you know, I don't have no issue with Bronson. I, I'm pretty sure some Piston fans got an issue with Jalen Bronson, but I don't. But I'm not about to pay him, like, 20, like, north of 25. I really don't want to pay him 25. But what you're getting at is the what you're getting at is the uh what you're getting is the uh you know what you what you're getting at is you're getting you you're getting the potential you know and you being able to play with a with a uh he being able to play with a uh a, a ball dominant guard you know you know they being able to play with a ball dominant guard, man, you know, that speaks value. I mean, Levine played maybe play with two ball dominant guys. Alonzo played and DeMar DeRozan, and you know, he fit in good too. So, I mean, very interesting. Very interesting. But I didn't propose again Jalen Bronson. You know, some Piston fans might be, oh, he ain't that good. I said from the beginning, he he might fit. He definitely a fit. He definitely a dog. You know, you play for Jay White and you make it to the league and make an impact. He a dog. But I think Dallas gonna do everything in their power to keep them. You know, so they said they won't uh said they won't do a uh a, a sign and trade. They said that already. They're not doing a sign and trade. So um so you see a lot of fans say I'm not paying him. I rather really throw kind of um, kind of money at Sim Simons or Aiden. I mean, I don't know what the infatuation with Piston fans and Aiden is, dog. He trash. I'd rather have Bronson. You know, like I said before. He said, "Right, well, I think Detroit. Uh, I think with the draft, Detroit has enough guards and swing force who can play shooting guard. So you know, so he might be on the side. You know, shooting guard. Uh, just fine and let Cade and Hayes run the point the entire time. Like, oh, we talk, man. Oh my God, bro. You, you really, I'm just telling you the fact that the the common fan IQ is crazy. He said four years for 100 million once agreed upon. See if the math wants to do a sign it. They said I already know." Van Fleet, no. I don't know why people like Van Fleet. Nice, though, but I'm good. I'd rather have Bronson at this point. He young. So, I mean, like I said before, man, Piston fans have, you know, Detroit fans, just they don't have IQ. I don't understand why people are so enamored with DeAndre Aiden, dude. Like, I mean, it's the same thing with Andre Dummett, a fucking beta male, bro. He don't play big. You know, he don't dominate, but, hey, it is what it is. Check out Detroit Piston Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit on notification, increase your chance to get notification. We go live, drop the video. So, got Detroit Piston Talk playlist uh, for more videos like this. Financial one, support the channel. Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Memo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Uh, appreciate the love and support. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, Twitter, Instagram, spot on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. If you got a business question, cry, response, or video quest, all the social media in the description. Financial one, support the channel. Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Memo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love and support. One time for the one time. Peace.